Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and on today's episode, we're going to be simplifying radicals. Simplifying radicals. Now, first off, what is a radical? A radical is an expression that can be found inside of a radical sign. And this symbol that kind of looks a little bit like a long division sign is called a radical sign. All right. Now, you use a radical sign when you're trying to find the second root or the square root of something. You use a radical sign if you're trying to find the third root or the fourth root or the fifth root of something. Right. That's what you use a radical sign. The radical sign is the symbol you use when you want to perform the inverse of raising a, raising a term to a power or using an exponent. Okay. Now. How do you do number one? First of all, let's read it. Let's read it. Let me, let me show you how it should be read, right? This is the square root of 28 to the fifth. That's what that is. The square root of 28 to the fifth. Now, how do I know this is the square root? When you see a radical sign and there's no number written in this space right here, the number that would be called the index, you might want to put that in your notes, the index, right? The number that's written in here, it's automatically assumed that this is the square root or the second root. Okay. Now, you always first look for perfect squares. Perfect squares like one, because one times one equals one, or four, because two times two equals four, nine, because three times three equals nine. Right? That's what you want to look for first. All right. Now, twenty is not a perfect square. Right? Now, how do I know that? Well, because I know my multiplication facts, and I know that on the multiplication table, from one times one up to twelve times twelve. If you go diagonal down from the upper left to the bottom right, that diagonal row is all perfect squares. Now, let me talk a little bit more about what a perfect square actually is. A perfect square is a term that has factors, right, where you can take a whole number and multiply that whole number by itself, and it will yield you that number, hence the perfect square. I gave you a couple of examples already, but let me give you another example. Think about 36. 36 has a few factors. But what happens if I do 6 times 6? Six? 6 is a whole number. And 6 multiplied by itself also gives me 36. Thus, 36 is an example of a perfect square. Just like 49. 49 is a perfect square because 7 times 7 gives me 49. Whenever you, you can take a whole number and multiply it by itself, the, number, the product that you end up with is considered a perfect square. Right? I mean, it gets into geometry and finding the area of squares, but I'm not going to get into all that right now. For now, I just want you to memorize that, that idea, if you don't know it already. That a perfect square, another example is 100, because I can take the whole number 10 and multiply it by itself and get 100. Right? Now, every number has a square root, but every number is not a perfect square. For example, 99. There's no whole number that you can multiply by itself to give you 99. You can multiply a decimal by itself to give you 99. Like 9 point something times 9 point something to give you 99. You could do that, but not a whole number. No decimals, right? So just think about that. So now, 20 is not a perfect square. Also, the variable, a to the fifth is not a perfect square. I'm going to put you on some more game. When you have a variable under the radical sign, all variables are perfect when and only when the exponent is an even number. Only when the exponent is an even number. Remember that. Write that down. Take a picture of that. The variable is a, ex is a perfect square only when the exponent is an even number. So this is a to the fifth. Five is not an even number. Therefore, we know that a to the fifth is not a perfect square. We know that. But I could break a to the fifth down where I could take part of it that would be a perfect square. By basically doing the opposite of the multiplication rule of exponents. So we got to know them, the, the multiplication rules, the division rules of exponents. We got to know those exponent rules. It's key. So watch what I do. I'm going to break 20 down, right? Also, now, I should have said this first, but when we're dealing with a number that's not a perfect square, you want to think of a factor of that number that is a perfect square, right? And you also want to think of the biggest one because that will save you time and effort so you don't have to repeat steps. Now, 20 is not a perfect square, but then I think, okay, well, out of the factors of 20, like 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5, which pair of factors has a perfect square in it? 4 times 5. 4 times 5, because 4 is a perfect square. 10 times 2 won't work, 
because 10 or 2 are not perfect. 20 times 1 won't work. Technically, 1 is a perfect square, but 20 times 1, that don't change nothing. You still end up with 20. You got to break the 20 down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this 20 down, and it's going to look like this. Oh, well, actually, let me erase that. Let me give you, let me get a blue joint. Boom, radical. I'm going to break 20 down into 4 times 5. See that 20? It used to be 20, now it's 4 times 5. Right? And I do that because since 4 is a perfect square, it can come out of the radical sign. It can come out of the radical sign. Right? So this, you know, think of this as like incarceration, prison industrial complex. And think about people that have escaped from the belly of the beast. People like Asada Shakur, shout out to her. Russell Maroon Schultz, shout out to him. Right? People like that that were able to escape at one time or another. Okay? That's what we want to do for some of these numbers in here. All right? So, the 20 turns into a 4 times 5. Right? Now, what about the A to the 5th? The A to the 5th is going to turn into A to the 4th times A. Because, again, we can do the opposite of the, of the multiplication rule for exponents. Because we want to get a variable that has an even-numbered exponent. Now, isn't A to the 4th times A the same thing as A to the 5th? It is. It is. Right? We could have did a squared times a to the third. But why would you do that? Because then you got an a to the third that you got to break down into a to the second times a to the first. All right? Now, what I can take out are the perfect squares. So again, four is a perfect square. So it's going to come out. When it comes out, it turns into a two. A to the fourth is a perfect square because any variable or, or number is a perfect square if it has an even numbered exponent and four is an even number a doesn't have an exponent written so that means it's a to the first one is not an even number so the a to the first can't come out only terms that have an even numbered exponent or are perfect squares already as numbers can come out now when the a to the fourth comes out this is what you do with variables this is what you do with variables that have an even numbered exponent when they come out you divide that exponent by 2, and that's the square root. So whether it was a to the 100th power, if it, when it comes out, it's a to the 50th, because 100 divided by 2. If it was a to, the thir a to the 14th power, when it comes out, it's a to the 7th, because that's 14 divided by 2. In our situation, we got a to the 4th. So when that comes out, that's going to be a to the 2nd, because 4 divided by 2 gives me a to the 2nd. So now what I'm left with is... The 2 comes out, the a squared comes out. What's left inside? The 5 and the a. There's nothing you can do with them. There's nothing you can do with them. The 2 came out, the a squared came out. The 5a stays in. The 5 stays in and the a stays in. So when we're simplifying radicals, this is our process. This is what we do. You look for perfect squares. If you don't have perfect squares, you try to break the numbers down into parts where a, one part is a perfect square. We broke 20 down into 4 times 5 because 4 is a perfect square. We broke a to the 5th down into a to the 4th times a because any variable with an even numbered exponent is a perfect square. So a to the 4th is a perfect square, right? And you want to use the biggest even numbered exponent you can. That's another thing you want to do. You want to use the biggest even numbered exponent that you possibly can. All right? So this is our final answer. 2a squared root 5a or 2a squared times the square root of 5a. That's our final answer. Now let's slide over here, look at number two. Number two is a fraction, all right? So we got a numerator and a denominator. They're both square roots, all right? Now I tend to look at these as like, you know, two separate problems, right? I deal with my numerator, then I deal with my denominator, all right? So first, I look at 72, and I ask myself, is 72 a perfect square? And then I say, no. Because I know my multiplication facts. I know 72 is not a perfect square. I know 64 is a perfect square because 8 times 8. And then I know 81 is a perfect square because 9 times 9. But if 72 is in between 64 and 81, it's no way that 72 could be a perfect square. Because there's no whole numbers in between 8 and 9. Right? Think about it like that. So, I could break 72 down though. The same way I broke 20 down. I broke 20 down into 4 times 5. I could break 72 down, but I want to be careful. I want to break it down 
where one of my factors is the biggest perfect square factor that 72 has, right? Because 72 has a few perfect square factors. I could break 72 down into 9 times 8. That's one option. I could break 72 down to 18 times 4. That's another option because 9 is a perfect square. 4 is a perfect square. But I could also do this. 36 times 2. Because 36 is a perfect square. Now, I'm going to use this right here. I'm going to use 36 times 2. The reason being is because if I don't, I'm going to have to keep doing the step over again. Case in point, if I broke 72 down into 9 times 8, the 9 could come out. Because 9 is a perfect square. But what about the 8? The 8 could still be broken down. And I would still have to break it down. So that means I got to repeat that step over again. Right? Same thing would happen if I did 18 times 4. The 4 could come out because it's a perfect square. But then the 18 would have to be broken down. So if I'm trying to break a number down, why don't I just break it down, you know, all at once? And the way you do that is you find the largest perfect square factor. So the largest perfect square factor is not 4 or 9, it's 36. So when I break down 72 into 36 times 2, the 36 comes out, the 2 is left inside of it. You can't do nothing with the 2. You don't got to break the 2 down. So that's what you want to do when you see these problems. If you have a number, right, a radicand, that's what that's called, the number inside the radical sign. If you have a radicand that has multiple perfect square factors, you want to pick the perfect square factor that's the biggest, the biggest one, right? The G, basically the, G, the, the, the GF perfect square, the greatest factor perfect square, or greatest perfect square factor, GPSF. That's what you want to pick. It makes life easier. So watch what I do. I'm going to change this into 36 times 2. Then I'm going to look at the denominator. I see square root of 64. I already said this. 64 is a perfect square. So I'm going to break 64, square root of 64 down into just 8. That's just plain 8. Here's another mistake that a lot of people make. They take the square root of a number, but then keep the radical sign. Get rid of the radical sign. Right? This radical sign is like a prison. Right? Once the 64 comes out, it's a little different. It's an 8 now. Don't keep it in prison. Right? It's home now. It's out. It's not the square root of 8. It's just 8. It's not the square root of 8. It's just 8. It's just plain old 8. All right? Now, in our numerator, we could pull this 36 out. Square root of 36 is 6. Right? When that comes out, that's just 6. The 2 stays inside. So we got 6 root 2 over 8. Now I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm like, oh, wait. I can simplify this 6 over 8. You can't simplify the 2 over 8. You might be tempted to. Because you might look at 2 over 8 and say, oh, I know 2 over 8 is the same thing as 1 fourth. So why can't I just simplify that? No, you can't because that's not really a 2. That's the square root of 2. That's not a 2. This is just a 6 and this is just an 8. We can reduce 6 over 8. We could do that. And I'm about to do that now. Because I know the common factor between 6 and 8 is 2. So I divide 6 by 2, and I also divide 8 by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is going to give me 3. 8 divided by 2 is going to give me 4. And then I'm going to have 3 root 2 over 4. And that's my final answer right there. And again, we can't do 2 over 4 and reduce that to 1 half. We can't do that because this is not really a 2. This is the square root of 2. Now. We could do the square root of 2 over the square root of 4 and reduce that because they're both square roots. We could do that. But in this format, square root of 2 over 4, we can't reduce that. All right? So I hope you learned something. And again, this is simplifying radicals. We use this when we use the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. And please like the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the page if you haven't already. And as I always say, Remember, there's all this math all around you. Peace.